Hey folks, Craig here. And today I'm going to share with you the DS games, the Nintendo DS games I purchased recently. I have quite a few here, I think about 15. Um, I, 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 I just love adding to my DS collection. I, I have to be approaching 300 games, but uh, there are always there are always games I want to get, but I, I still don't own. DS just has a massive library, you know? Um, so these are in no particular order. There's, there's just whatever order I stack them in. I'll start off here with Puzzle Quest. Um, I've owned Puzzle Quest for a while, actually, on the PSP. I think I chose the PSP, even though the, the, the DS version was the version of choice for a lot of players because of the touchscreen. Um, I had the PSP version because it was it was on like clearance, so I bought that version instead. Uh, it was probably on clearance because people were buying the DS version <laughs> instead. Um, but this is a nice little blast from the past. You can actually, um, there's actually an updated Switch version that you can download and play. Another puzzle game. I actually want puzzle game kind of crazy. There's actually a lot of puzzle games in here, actually. Uh, Zookeeper, uh, another classic uh, puzzle game that people really enjoy. I actually haven't played it yet. Um, but I, I love this cover art. I love the, the color gradient. I love the art style. This is, this is a really cool cover. And a lot of people really enjoyed this game. So at some point, I'm going to sit down and give it a fair shake. Another puzzle game. Magnetica and Mag Magnetica is also known as like Puzzle Loop or Luxor. Um, I love this cover though. I love the contrast between the black and white and the colored balls. But this is this is a really fun. I like this puzzle game. I like Magnetica a lot. Bust to Move DS. Is just, this is still sealed. Someone just must have had a box of them and selling them. Um, I buy Bust a Move games or Puzzle Bobble, as it's also known, because they're sort of like I don't know. There's a there's a personal attachment to them. My, when my wife got wife and I got married, we planned our honeymoon to be in Tokyo, but we couldn't we didn't do that until six months after we got married. But the weekend after we got married, we just took a little trip in New England uh, ourselves, and um, we went to this bar arcade and it was a really nice place it was it was it was a bit uh what is it called bit bar bit arcade something like that in massachusetts and it was it was really nice and they had a number of games and i was i was beating my wife <laughs> I, was, I was really i remember playing like uh, marvel versus capcom 2 and just 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 beating my wife and it was and i was starting to feel bad and i let her pick the next game and she chose Puzzle Bobble on a Neo Geo um, MVS. And folks, my wife beat the shit out of me in Puzzle Bobble. My wife, is, my wife is fucking nasty at Puzzle Bobble, it turns out. So, you know, I have like this, you know, this, this nice little personal attachment to Bust and Move Puzzle Bobble, and I, I, I buy it on the handheld systems. Um, so, this was only a few dollars, you know, sealed, so. Pack Picks. This is an early Nintendo DS game. Um, back when, you know, publishers and developers were experimenting with the touchscreen. So in this case, you draw Pac-Man on the screen and then swipe to uh, guide him to eat ghosts. Um, you know, a neat little concept. It reminds me a bit of like Yoshi Touch and Go. Uh, it does, they don't play the same, but just the sort of like uh, experimental arcade high score style of, of gameplay. Um, that was pretty common early in the DS's life, and this is pretty well regarded. Uh, Trauma Center Under the Knife. Believe it or not, I don't own this, and I believe there was a sequel on DS as well. Um, I own I own the Wii versions, and the Wii versions didn't do a lot for me. Um, but that's a, you know probably because the game is probably best played with a touchscreen. And there's so much nostalgia looking at this this box art even though I, i've never owned the game until now it was it was a it was a pretty popular game in the ds crowd so just ha just looking at this for me uh, i have quite a bit of nostalgia looking at it despite never owning it 100 classic books well you know this sort of reveals my priorities when i was buying games ds games back in the day you know i wasn't gonna read you know Wuthering heights on on my nintendo ds <laughs> you know, to, <laughs> or tale of two cities <laughs> i wasn't gonna do that so i never bought this um but you know 
years later, I'm still not going to reword Knights on DS. But, I mean, I can respect the, um, you know, what, what Nintendo's going for here. You know, it really shows the versatility, the range of what the DS could do. Um, it really is a very special system. Um, you know, again, this is not an ideal way to read, the, read these, you know, copyright-free games. As you can see, some of the names here. Um, you know, not for me. No, thank you. <laughs> but, um, you know, uh, still pretty neat, right? And we have here Dig Dug Digging Strike. Uh, this is kind of a twofer, right? Like Digging Strike has one of the DS subtitles. Uh, and it's also what was common around this time, a reimagining of a classic arcade game. You know, this isn't uh, explicitly Dig Dug, which is a shame. I feel like uh, I don't I don't think I have not seen it. I don't think, you know, the original Dig Dug is unlockable on this, although I think it should be. It's sort of like its own thing, its own its own game um, based around a similar concept. Um, but it's a shame that like you can't just unlock. Just just give me Dig Dug, please. <laughs> but no, you got to have Digging Strike. You got to have this reimagining. Very common in the early 2000s. And we have another stack here. We have Dragon Ball Orange, uh, Oranges, we <laughs> have Dragon Ball Oranges, Dragon Ball Clementines, Papayas, um, Dragon Ball Origins, and this was, this was a very popular game in the DS crowd, um, because it's sort of like this action adventure game, uh, in some ways similar to, um, like Phantom Hourglass or whatever, I think you can, you can use the button controls here, but you can also use the touchscreen to, to guide, uh, around. And, and play so there are some similarities there there's a sequel as well this is getting a, a little bit more difficult to find complete on ebay it doesn't always pop up and when it does it costs a few bucks unfortunately i'll have to get the sequel at some point as well but uh you know a lot like trauma center you know i have a lot of nostalgia looking at this this cover even though i personally never owned it because it was quite well liked back in the day The original Style Savvy, and now I own them all. Uh, I think there's three of them on the on the 3DS, and I, I, you know, look, I really like Style Savvy. It's not often you see feminine coded games like this that have a lot of effort put into them. They tend to be pretty throwaway, like you know, my horse farm or whatever, and they're like garbage. Um, this is published by Nintendo. They put a lot of effort in these style savvy games, and even though they're feminine coded, they're 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 quite good. Like they are, you know, they it's it is depending on which one you play. You know, there's sort of like this puzzle component, but also like this sim management component to it, and um, you know, through the lens of like fashion, and they're they're actually really well made. They're actually really good. I like style savvy a lot. Um, you know, maybe. Maybe if you've never thought about it because you're like, oh, it's like a girl's game. I don't know. You know, give it a shot. Surprise, surprise the heck out of me. Oh. A couple of them here. We have Mario vs. Donkey Kong 2, March of the Minis. Uh, the original Mario vs. Donkey Kong was on the Game Boy Advance. And we also have Mario vs. Donkey Kong Miniland Mayhem. Um, of course, you can't download these levels anymore because uh, the DS doesn't go online. Um, but now I have all of these games. I have all of these, um, I think Tipping Stars was on the 3DS and the Wii U. Uh, I have the physical version from Japan for that. So now I have, I have all of these, including the, the Game Boy Advance one. Nice little puzzle platformers. Nice additions to their respective systems. Master of Illusion. Um, <laughs> this is <laughs> Illusions, Michael. Uh, this <laughs> <laughs> you can learn to be a magician. Okay. Comes with a deck of cards. Uh, I got mine for pretty inexpensive because it has like this old GameStop sticker on it. That's fine by me. Um, but uh, you can learn to do different tricks. You can do learn to do different card tricks with the deck deck of cards that's included. Um, you know, like like 100 books. <laughs> it's not for me. I'm not a magician. But again, it just it's an, an, an interesting range of game for the DS, particularly from Nintendo. Then this was published by Nintendo, so um, you know, interesting stuff. Um, I think everything inside this box is still sealed. It could probably stay that that way. That's <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> um, and then we have Picross DS. This may surprise people, but I actually don't. There's a lot of Picross. There's a lot of Picross games on the DS. 
Um, I don't, I don't own any of them. This is the first one. I've never really played pit cross. Never really, there's all these numbers. Like, here's the thing you have to know about me. I'm a very, uh, this is going to sound conceited. I'm a relatively intelligent person, but it's all sort of like very creative minded stuff, all, uh, creative or like language. It's, it's that sort of leaning of, of intelligence when it comes to like more concrete stuff, like numbers, absolutely not. My brain turns to tapioca. I can't do it. Um, so I'm like, this? This makes my brain melt. Look at all these fucking numbers. Absolutely no way. I can't do that. So I've never, I never really got into, into pit cross because of that. Um, but, you know, I, I figured, you know what? No time like the present, right? Like, let's get started. Let's give this a shot. Um, so I have here the very first pit cross on Nintendo DS. It's not a numbers guy. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> and finally, the last game here, Professor Layton and the Last Spectre. This is the last Professor Layton game uh, I needed to add to my collection. I have them all now. Um, well, all on DS and 3DS. I think there was like some ports on the Switch or something like that, right? But I, I do have them all on the DS and 3DS now. And um, this one's the most interesting to me because of the London Life uh, RPG. That's that's probably more compelling to me. You know, I know people like Professor Layton, and, and I'm actually committed to give Professor Layton and Phoenix Wright uh, a second chance. Well, probably like a third or fourth chance this summer. Like, I'm just going to pop this in. I'm going to play those games. Um, because it never really appealed to me. These sort of, like, puzzles wrapped in, like, a visual novel has never really been my... You know, you read and read all these paragraphs of text, and then someone's like, that reminds me of a puzzle. And then, you know, you got that little wiener kid. He's like, oh, Professor! It's a puzzle, and then you, I don't, you know, it's never been my thing. Um, but I'm committed to give it another shot. They are very well liked, and I can understand why. I'm not <laughs> making these jokes. I'm not ragging on these games. I know why people like them. Um, so I'm, I'm going to give them another shot. But this, this London Life is actually very, very interesting to me. I like to give that a shot. So those are all the DS games I've purchased recently. Um, and uh, I just love, I love collecting for the DS. It's such a fantastic system. Even though I don't play it as much these days, it's a little antiquated. The resolution, the, you know, the, 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 yeah, some of the gameplay in these games are a little clunky. You know, they're a bit older. They're getting on in age. Um, you know, the chunky graphics. It's a, it's a little tough to get into sometimes. Sometimes you have to realign your mindset to, to get into these games. But even if I don't necessarily play it all the time, man, just just a stunning stunning library it reminds me why i collect for it just just some really brilliant stuff so um i hope you enjoyed this video if you have any thoughts on any of these games uh, feel free to share them of course um i want to thank you for watching and until next time you take it easy mm -hmm.